In today's video, we're going to continue working on restoring the Disco 2. One of the biggest problems with, well, there's a lot of problems. Uh, one of the first problems I wanted to address with my discovery was fixing the sunroofs. They were both leaky. And because of that, when I got it, the headliner fabric has fallen off of the headliner. So I knew I was going to have to take that out. And I knew I'd have to take the headliner out in order to fix the drain. So I removed the headliner. I didn't record any of that. But man, I had so much trouble actually getting some of the, the sunroof to quit leaking. I just don't trust the sunroof even though I've got them fixed. I don't trust that thing not to keep leaking. Uh, so what I've decided, I will look for more industrial solutions for this. Some people are bedlining their roof liners. So that's what this video is. It's going to start with the headliner already out and the cloth already have been completely pulled off. So for, for this video, what we'll see is me cleaning up the headliner, pairing it to paint it, and then getting it back in front of the car. Ye old internet says these nylon brushes on an angle grinder are what's best for cleaning the foam off of a headliner. This is the foam in, oh it does just scrape it. That is the foam in question. Let's see if we can blast all this stuff off with this thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. Kind of flares out, that's crazy. That looks like that. The angle grinder was probably a bit too fast. This I could set the speed. Oh yeah, that's less terrifying. So the next step is to truck bed liner. I was gonna do a nice fancy like plaid liner, but I just don't trust that roof drain. I still feel like it's gonna leak, even with all the silicone. There's also like a dozen other places it has a potential leak. So we're gonna try to make it near indestructible. I found the uh, a tan colored headliner because I didn't want to do black. I've seen people do black with the tan interiors and I really like the tan. So let's see how this thing is gonna work. I, I am doing it inside because it's windy outside. What I'm gonna do is just wear a respirator. All right, respirator and goggles. Let's do this. That looks nowhere as even as I want it, but that's just the first coat. So let that dry and then I'll go over it with another coat. Okay, I really didn't like how the spray foam turned out. It was way too thin and I don't, I, another two or three cans, I don't know if it's gonna cut it. So I was like, well, maybe I could just paint it. You can add textures to paint and get a nice texture, but I really did already spray the texture on here. I just need a more solid coating. So what I wanna see is if I can paint it and get a good even finish with the paint. So the, the technique I'm gonna use here, I'm gonna paint it and then I'm gonna go over the paint with a roller and hopefully the roller evens it all out. And if this looks good, then I'm done. If not, now I got a good solid base of this whiter-ish tan, which I think actually matches the upper part of the siding pretty good. And then I take the roller and I go over it with the roller. And then this makes sure you don't see brush strokes. You just see the, the texture from the bed liner stuff. I don't know. As long as this isn't too light, I think that's going to look pretty good. Problem with these cheap brushes, they leave these little hairs occasionally. Well, the good news is I only have one foam roller left, so I have committed myself to doing all this tonight. And I think actually a thicker foam would have been better. But again, I decided to do this before I was fully prepared to do this, which is a good motto for my life. He started the project without really being ready for what all it would entail. All right, that's looking pretty fresh and clean. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it into the truck later after it all dries and see if it matches. Like, I think that's gonna be a really, oh, you know what, I have some pieces. Let me go grab a piece and see if it actually matches. It's definitely lighter. Do you see that? That was amazing. It's got less, I don't know, it's pretty good. The light makes it hard to tell, but it's gonna be light, which is okay. 
I've decided to do another coat. It looks pretty good. There's some like textury areas that are showing through where I probably just didn't clean it enough to be honest. So we're gonna see if we can make that look a little better on the last coat. Instead of just doing another coat, I'm gonna try to add some of this texture paint stuff. And kind of interesting. I don't know what I expected. It honestly feels like styrofoam. It's real light. It's not heavy like sand. It says it's silica and quartz. It says you're supposed to use this whole bag to a gallon, but what I have is a half of a sample left. This was 31 fluid ounces or one, I swear it looks like it says 16th, 16th of a pint, but that would be insane. It also says mix it up in a separate container. I'm just going to dump some of this in here and shake it and keep doing that till I have what I like. It says this stuff's deadly to breathe, so I am wearing a mask. We're about half left. Can you see that in that hole? Down in a hole, losing my control. Uh, that looks like roughly the right amount. It's kind of textury looking. I'm going to add a little bit more. All right, based on my calculations, that was perfect. Let's seal this up. The poisonous silicate quartz. Now it's super sandy. Saturate the roller. Yeah, that's going to go quick. Um, let's see what it does. Um, that's going to be super textured. That's all right, though. I think that'll cover up my little um, imperfections I wanted going. And it'll look like popcorn. Everybody likes popcorn ceiling, right? Isn't that the fad to put it in everything? Well, it's probably too thick, but I'm going with it. I still think the technique of painting it on and then smearing it with the roller works better than just the roller. Actually, I think this is going to be better. I don't think I'm making it hardly worse. I am going to try to save a little bit of this stuff, which probably means I'll have to scoop it back into that container since I just used the last bit of the container in case I scratch it trying to get it back in the car because it's kind of a pain to get in and out of there. Uh, and then I can kind of touch it up in the car, which will also give me the opportunity to drip this paint all over everything inside. Sometimes you have to think about how you're going to ruin these things ahead just so it's not as much as a surprise when it happens. Okay, I might have done a little too much. I can't do anything about that now. So I did the perfect amount. I'm kind of trying to smear this up here a little bit because I got a little too much back here. The good news is if I hate this, I still could cover it with cloth. And this didn't cost all that much money. The spray cans cost a ton. Like the truck bed liner to do this whole thing would have been probably 80 bucks. Whereas this, I used a sample of paint, which I actually had. But, you know, you could get a sample of paint for pretty cheap. And then the, that foam crap, the roller, whatever, the texture stuff was only like four or five bucks off of Amazon. So this is a fairly cheap way to redo your headliner. Oh, that just splattered through one of those little holes all over my leg. Oh, the foam rollers, that costs some money too. A lot of this gets covered up with trim, I hope, he says doubtfully. It looks better than just the first coat. It's definitely more even. And then the bumps in that hid some of the imperfections in the liner. It looks really good on film. Or film. It looks really good on the video. I'm just going to tell you guys that it looks just as good in person as it does on this little screen. And you'll have to believe me till you do it for yourself. And then you'll just assume you did it wrong. That's usually what happens to me when I'm trying to replicate YouTube videos. It's time to start putting the headliner back together. We're going to see if we can replace this elastic cord in the um, little cargo nets at the back. See how floppy it is? We want something more rigid. I was going to order some elastic that matches that color, but I have these little this black bungee stuff, and I already have it, so I'm going to see if I can make it work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this old one out of here. I want to kind of see how that goes. It looks like it just it goes under, and then just every other. Taking it out might never go back together. And then we go on a piece that's roughly... I don't want it tight enough where it like pulls the thing together, but it's got to be able to stick down both. Ooh, that's going to be tight. Oh, no, it'll go in. All right, good. To there, to there. Anybody remember how that was together? It went over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. They had these little metal clips on it, which I don't have, but this is so much tighter. You know what? That's probably good enough. It's still got a little curve to it, but this stuff's so much thicker. I think if I pulled it super tight, no, I can, but you still gotta be able to get stuff in. All right, I'm gonna pull a little tighter. So let's cut a little bit off of here. Push it in there, pull this one out, pull it a little tighter. And then hopefully when it goes in there, it'll stretch it out a little bit because 
Eh, all right, that's good enough. Got to get these to stay in here somehow. Here's the problem. If I do it and it comes out, it's never going back in there because I'm not taking the headliner off again. You'd have to take the headliner off to get this off. Maybe if I just drop a like a blob of hot glue down in there. You think that would work? All right, I'm going to try hot glue. While I was waiting for it to heat up, I went ahead and did this other one. So, oh, look, that needs to... And you, you just realize this stuff as you do it. So, look, that slopes up, so it actually needs to be below that level of slope or it's not really going to sit flat against the ceiling. Nice, look at that. That was a good mess. I'll squirt some down in there, around there. Is that too hot to touch? I wonder if I just hold it like that till it dries. Blow it. How long does it take to cool? Cool off! That was fun. All right, that cooled off. <gasps> it came undone! This one to an angle. Move it back down in there. The nice thing about doing it this way, if anybody ever decides they don't like it, it's gonna be way more work to um, switch it out. If I remember correctly, these center pieces are the only pieces that attach before I put it in the car. It was a while, I, probably two months ago, I took it out of the thing, so my memory is not as fresh. So I'm gonna try to push these through these little holes, and then I'll have to get the, there's metal backings that go on the other side. I gotta get to both sides at the same time. do there. Good news, I did not pull that string too tight. It went on bungee, I guess. Oh, what the fudge? That little tab just broke. That'll get some hot glue on it. Hot glue! Can't you can see? Apparently I glued the junk out of this side, not glued the uh, painted. Luckily it was the corner one, so that was probably the one that used actually is the strongest and holds it all together. There's these little bits of metal that hold that all together. Oh look, this one's obvious. <laughs> Yay! And there's these little doo hickies that hold it down. You know what? This actually might just re-thread onto that little nub. I'm just gonna get these started so they don't you know fall out at least a little bit. And now I have these little jobbies. Interesting. Oh, Figured it out. I'm probably gonna thread these by hand and not use the drill so I don't strip them. I'm not gonna make you guys watch me put all that back together, but I will show you how I decided to fix that little nub over there. They are all back on. And for the broken one, I just, I pushed down with my thumb and twisted till it stayed. And that was not enough to really hold it. So I blobbed some hot glue over it since I was using that anyway. These things, um, you definitely don't put them on with power. You just use something like this. Do something that you can twist by hand and just go super easy because it looks like they were really only made to do once. Yeah, and now you can kind of see how the color match that I chose matches with the uh, trim. Definitely a lot lighter, but who cares? And the nice thing is with this kind of truck bed liner texture, every time you reach into here, you get to scrape your knuckles really good. So um, that's good for your gas in the back. I think that'll look fine. It'll look nice and light, maybe a little too light, but better than a soppy old hangy headliner. Let's go put that back in the car. Phase one. Now I need to hook up. I need to hook up these wires before I push it up anymore. What's the first thing to hold it into place? I guess that was the last screw I took out. So let's get that one in first. Is it going? Yes. Gotta connect this first. Do you want me to hold this back part up? don't know what I want. I don't really know how I did this. I guess when I took it down, it just fell. Kind of looked like a ceiling of like an actual house. I know. Um, hmm. You know, maybe I should connect it from the front first. All right, pause it for a second. Okay, we didn't get that on video, but what happened? I tucked under the front, just underneath those little A-pillars while Leela held open the back. Once it was tucked and held open at the back, I put the screw in through there and then I ran back here and I put this little piece in right there and that little piece in right there. And now it's held together. So now I can start getting the lights in and the other supports that'll hold it. So just got some of these little finishing touches. Which one do you think goes in first? Okay. Oh, you didn't see it. Well, okay, I just put that in. You didn't see it because I held the camera stupid, but the back edge goes in first. There's another one up there that you're gonna see. Boop. 
I got these little fancy um, LED dome lights. I even paid extra to get the yellow ones. Ooh! To make it like old school. That might be too little. It looks orange. I think, yeah. Eh, all right, whatever. I paid extra for that, so you better like it. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. Clips in here. I didn't really keep track of which ones came from where, so hopefully these are not site specific. And then two eight millimeter bolts. This is the surround for the sunroof. Wait, what size go out? Is the fudge? I'm gonna guess the rubber goes on the metal. Oh, good. This is gonna be one of those that was way easier to take down than it was to put. It was gonna be to put back up. Oh, there we go. Okay, yes. <laughs> Ta -da! Let's see if we can get this front thing up. That's the light holder, so stick that through there. These are the plugs. Okay. Seems a bit precarious. Nice. These are cooperating. There's five on this side, five on that side, and then a little piece here, 11 of these screws, and then this thing is in. Okay, guys, this is the other one, so I can actually show you how this one goes since I screwed up the other one. So the front edge goes in first, and then the back snaps in. All right, good. All right, now you guys know how to do that. All right, we got this big old screw that goes right there. It was the longest one that was left over. <laughs> Here, and then look, this is the garage door opener. This was at the one at the junkyard, but mine didn't have it, but it didn't work. So I've rigged mine. So I just rigged it. Let's see. It's working. But what I did was I took out all the internals and then got one of just my standard remotes and hooked it up so these buttons work my standard remote. Then we had this little support for the why is everything? I'm gonna just squeeze that together. All right, I'm gonna go downstairs and get a special pair of pliers for doing this. All right, let's do better. There we go. What a nightmare. I don't think I have any extra of those. Well, hopefully this part won't be a failure. Let's get this in. Oh wait, is this the other side? Oh yeah. Oh no, wait. Okay, yeah. Cable in the hole. I can't believe that thing broke. There's no way super glue will fix that. I could fix it where it held it in place, but then you'd never be able to use it. Or the first person who used it, would, oh, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna super glue it together so it looks fixed. And then the next time somebody gets in here and breaks it, I'll go, what'd you do? And then expect them to fix it for me. All right, plan. So we're just gonna super glue that like that. Actually, it might work. It'll work until somebody tries to unclip it. And then it'll come flying at their face. And I can act all indignant that they broke it. Good plan. Let's get the super glue. And as usual, the super glue instantly glues to your fingers, but takes a while to set up to glue to the plastic. I hope I'm filming this and not just, I say film a lot. That's because I'm an old person. I'm hoping I'm recording this. Okay, it'll still fold. Oh, you know what? I didn't put the screws through there to hold that together. Oh. All right, hold on. I, I need to put a screw in there to hold that into place. And then we'll do the super glue. Okay, I got this side up and I only had to resort to a little bit of super glue. So that's good. That over there is drying. I'm actually gonna get a little dab of epoxy and a fluid on the inside of there. So that way it'll hold up until the person tries to break it. All right, we are back. Like I ever really went anywhere. Today, we're gonna get these side panels back on. Or today, same day, you guys don't know. Who knows when I'm doing what? Oh, do I have to take that up? No. Look. Ha -ha. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this down here before that zucks into itself. It seems to be trying to. They look like they go behind the rubber. Yep. Pull this rubber trim off. Right, that's the screw. Those two are the screws. The rest are the push pins. Let's assume these are the two long ones. Okay, that works. Let's put a long one here too. Just three along the top. So I made a happy little accident. I didn't think about there being a grab handle back here because usually there's not because there's no seat, but I have an extra one. So I'm gonna go grab that and put that grab handle in. 
So these two are held in by screws and these these little caps. One out of four made it. All right, cloth definitely would have looked more refined, but I don't think there's a lot of this vehicle you can call refined. I'm gonna get a grab handle, put that in, then we'll do the other side, which you don't have to watch me struggle with. All right, we have a few finishing touches. Boop, boop. Boop. Oh, there we go. Boop. <clears throat> Boop. 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 This is the conclusion to the headliner video. I got it all back in with the truck bed line roof. It does look a little more industrial, which is probably good because those sunroofs are leaky pieces of crap. Looks better than it did with the headliner falling apart and this one will not drip down on you again. You don't get as nice as a finish between the headliner and the trim panels when it's not cloth and cushiony, but that's okay. I think I'd be more upset if I could get the, all the panels and seats and everything perfectly clean and new looking, but it's still a 20 some year old car, but it's definitely better than when I started.